Good afternoon. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a great past few weeks for the railway, but it is important not to lose hope. There's still plenty of stuff we can do, and plenty of stuff that needs doing, even if we'll be pushed back quite a way before that happens. So, let's zone out for a few minutes and think of the lines that we'd most like to reopen if we had the chance. Of course, this is going to be highly subjective. If there are any lines that I've missed out that you think would be prime for reopening, please do let me know. There are some parts of the country I'm not too familiar with, and therefore I might be missing out something obvious. The first line I'd reopen would be in the southwest of Scotland, Dumfries to Stranra via Kessel Douglas, to be precise. This line closed in 1965, but I think it will be incredibly useful today. There are several sizeable towns along its route, particularly Castle Douglas and Dalbitty. Unfortunately, the area has fallen on hard times, with, for example, many closed shops dominating the high streets. However, enhanced rail connections may well change this, and Dumfries would stand to gain as well from potential commuters and shoppers from the surrounding villages. Furthermore, the route the line took was incredibly scenic, and much of the bridges and infrastructure remains. It will be an ideal route for rail tours, close to various northern cities, but also beautiful and remote. That said though, the right-of-way isn't perfect. The line has been built on in several places, and it's so bad in Dalbeti that I sadly think the line will have to be rerouted to the north of the town, rather than through it as it did originally. In Castle Douglas, the only real option I can see is saying goodbye to the Tesco Superstore, but uh, that's a win for me. Speaking of the two towns, I think it would be a good idea, if the funds were available of course, to avoid the awkward curve that the line used to take between the two, and instead build a new tunnel directly under the hills. This would increase the price of the reopening significantly though, so it would have to be assessed properly. But I've not mentioned the main reason why you'd want to reopen this line. The ferries. The southwestern corner of Scotland is, geographically speaking, very close to Northern Ireland. As a result, it's one of the busiest ferry corridors in the UK, with 11 crossings a day in each direction. Sadly though, the transport links to Ken Ryan Port are quite poor. In particular, the rail links are dire. The closest station to Ken Ryan is Stranra Harbour, when Stenderline moved the ferry services from Stranra up the lock to Ken Ryan, in order to take advantage of the deeper waters and use larger ships, the railway station didn't move. If you want to go to Stranra town, you have to walk through an abandoned ferry terminal, which goes on for quite some way and isn't very pleasant. But if you want to go to Ken Ryan port and catch a ferry, well you're miles away. To solve this, I would actually close the section of track that runs through Stranra town. Instead, I would reopen the section of track that runs north and continue it on to Cairn Ryan. Stranra station would be moved to the new curve. This would be quite away from the town centre, however there is plenty of space for new development, creating almost a hub of its own. Up at Cairn Ryan, I would rebuild the port to allow for better connections between trains and ferries. This wouldn't just be for passengers too. Coupled with a redevelopment of the Belfast Harbour area, freight trains could be reinstated to Northern Ireland, strengthening the economy and reducing emissions. On the subject of emissions, the line might as well be electrified from the get-go. This would allow, say, four or five trains a day to or from London to operate up the West Coast Main Line with no need for diesel haulage. As for the more regular stopping services, I'd run an hourly extension of the Newcastle to Carlisle trains, which would run through to Ken Ryan. I hope I've made the case for Dumfries to Stranra well, but unfortunately it seems as if the government has other ideas. By sheer coincidence, whilst I was writing this video, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, announced that some of the money saved from the cancellation of HS2 north of Birmingham will be spent on upgrading, presumably that means widening, the A75, a road that runs between Dumfries and Stranra. The choice to accommodate extra traffic from Great Britain to Northern Ireland by road feels a short-sighted one that runs contrary to our aims as a society. With huge growth of the route that doesn't currently have many connections, we have been presented with an opportunity to design a corridor almost from scratch, and making rail a large part of it would be enormously beneficial. 
I highly doubt that anyone is listening, but if any government advisers do happen to be watching this video, then I strongly urge you to rethink your decision. More roads is not the direction we want to be going in. The second new line would be one that serves Glastonbury and Street in the southwest of England. The two towns are sizeable enough to have a railway connection in their own right, but what makes their lack of one particularly ridiculous is the positioning of the Glastonbury Festival. This is one of the largest music festivals in the world, but at the moment the closest railway station is Castle Carey, requiring bus transfers to and from the festival. A direct rail connection, therefore, would both improve the experience of festival goers and boost our international credibility. Indeed, there originally was a railway that ran directly through the festival's site. Its track bed remains, and I have no doubt it could be reinstated. If anything, it would become an attraction in its own right. Another reason for this reopening would be to increase the housing stock of Bristol. I'll explain this in more detail later, but it would include various infrastructure improvements to existing lines, and it would hopefully help to solve Bristol's crippling housing crisis. As for the line's right of way, I'll present you with two options, which vary massively in costs, but also in returns. The first, and by far most beneficial, would be an entirely new, almost high-speed line, running from Froome and rejoining the main line down at Taunton. This will provide a faster and more direct route for trains running from London to Penzance and Plymouth. If electrified to improve acceleration, too, you could almost certainly add a stop at Glastonbury and still reduce journey times overall. Whilst I think it would be worth it, it would be extremely expensive, so the second option provides a cheaper alternative. This would see the section of the famous Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway reopen, from the branch just south of Bruton up to a new station at Glastonbury and Street. It would be able to follow the original trajectory of the line in most places, though a few slight diversions or compulsory purchases would be needed where it has been built on. Sadly though, so many buildings have been constructed on the site of the line in Glastonbury itself that I just couldn't justify running it along its original path. Instead, I would divert the line south so that it stopped at a new station in between Glastonbury and Street. To make up for this, there must be very high quality cycling and walking routes into the respective towns, and there should be a decent bus connection as well. The branch would terminate here, so it wouldn't be very long at all. Being a stub, you also wouldn't get any sped up journeys to the southwest. Services along the branch will be half hourly. One train per hour will be an extension of the existing services that run from Bristol and terminate at Westbury. The second service would be an extremely long extension of the current Filton to Bristol trains. All of this would coincide with an electrification of most local lines around Bristol, creating an almost metro-style service, unlike the current Metro West, which is just two diesel trains an hour. These upgrades would also happen if we were to take the first option of an entirely new line to Taunton. But anyway, why are we doing this? Well, Bristol has a very severe housing shortage. It's a city that has grown a lot recently, but its lack of housing supply is holding it back. If combined with sensible, high-density development around stations, of course, then improved rail links to more places can see the radius in which people can comfortably live as Bristolians increased, potentially relieving the city of some of its problems. So, those are the two railway lines I'd reopen first if I had the power. Hopefully I didn't sound too ridiculous, and you're able to enjoy it even if you don't know the areas. Anyway, that's all from me. Goodbye. Thank you for watching GW Villager. Please like, subscribe and share. Thank you. Please also join our Discord server. A link to it will be in the description down below.